You know, Joe, why don't we start off since uh, there might be someone out there who doesn't knew, know who you are. Who is, okay. who is Joe Rogan? That's a good question. I wish I knew. <laughs> I mean, uh, who am I? I'm a stand-up comedian slash uh, mixed martial arts commentator slash uh, occasional actor TV personality. And why should people listen to what you have to say? That's a very good question. I have no logical reasoning. No, <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> oh, you're bored, I guess you should listen to what I have to say. If you're listening to what I have to say, I've got to assume you've exhausted all your other resources. <laughs> 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 well, people who don't know, Jan is uh, one of the first guys who, uh, I mean, am I, am I allowed to talk about this? Who, oh, uh, dude, go, go right for yeah. it. Yeah, Jan is the first guy who got me high on DMT. <laughs> so uh, Jan introduced me to uh, the afterlife. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, you know, and I was just that was I was just going to go into that. Well, in fact, uh, you and I over at your house once with Eddie Bravo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we had a friend freak out. He uh, resisted the experience. Well, first of all, I think something happened where he had uh, he had eaten far too close to the time where we were doing this. So he really shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. And then uh, um, when we started, he started he had to throw up. Like he he had food was in his body and it was freaking him out and he was super blazed on DMT. I mean he was like a couple minutes deep into the experience, so he could barely walk. Well, I mean, this was, this was uh, five meo. Five DMT. meo. Yes, yeah. this was even stronger than DMT. Yeah, yeah. He was. I mean, I don't know even know how he was walking because when I did it, I dissolved to the center of the universe and became a part of like the cellular structure of all matter. I, uh, it was the strangest experience ever. I couldn't imagine having to walk around while I was in that state. But he he got up and I got, guided him over to the sink and he threw up and then he started going crazy, he running around and screaming and saying a bunch of things that he wouldn't want us to say. <laughs> so well well. We'll edit that out, but uh, <laughs> it was pretty shocking, you know. And then the best part about it was after it was over, he was like, "Obviously, I'm a work in progress." <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about his own personality. He was oh, like, "Okay, I'm a, I'm a work in progress." <laughs> like, yeah, you think? What do you think about the 2012 movement? The movement is filled with silly people. That's the problem. The, the idea is very, very fascinating. The idea that every civilization has thought that we are moving towards some giant event, you know, whether it is the apocalypse, the resurrection, you know, the, the changing of the age, the end of the long count, however you want to look at it. But there's a lot of these people that, that are in this movement that have like this definitive answer for what's going to happen. They're like, hey, you're going to need to get gold and, you know, you're going to need to make your own agriculture. And well, that's I mean, having your own plants that you grow for food and having your own animals that you eat. That's a good idea anyway. That's a great way to live, you know, to live in a, a natural connected way to the earth, like living on a farm. That's like a real natural way to live. It's a very intelligent, fulfilling, natural way. I mean, we are designed to be hunters and gatherers and to live off the earth and to be like in harmony with the earth. That's a great thing, but these people are all convinced that they know what's going to happen. We're going to need to create our own currency and you know, this is what we're going to, we're going to need to make a new form of government. Like, says who? Says how? What says you? Are you the one who's figured this all out? Because that's preposterous. You, you automatically become the enemy. If you tell me that you have all the answers and you tell me that this is how it's all going to go down and this is what we're going to need, you're saying that you can see it all coming. You don't know what's coming. What's coming could be fucking crazy. It could be insurmountable. It could be b beyond boundary dissolving. With, with the next stage of human evolution, it might come in technological form. It might be some sort of an interface that allows us to abandon the, the, the monkey body and use the mind to connect to all the other minds in the world as one big hive. Who knows what the hell it's going to be? But it's not going to be you need gold, okay? It's not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All those assholes, you know, you need to go get gold. Gold is. I, gold. I I agree with you totally. And gold, the value of gold, is driven by fear and uncertainty. And uh, you know, so you have all of these these uh, 
conspiracy radio stations out there putting out all of this fear and then the value of gold keeps going up and by the way these conspiracy radio stations who i have friends that have these shows they profit off the sales of this gold big money they're making a lot of fucking money you know and there's a reason why they go gold is a uh, ladies and gentlemen we need to get ourselves some gold and guns ladies and gentlemen welcome alex jones to the show (laughs) There's a lot of things I agree with you boys are saying, but what you don't understand is the New World Order is very real and very evil. <laughs> he believes what he says. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's correct. Oh, I thought he, he was sitting next to you there. No, no, he's right here. He's in my head at all times. He's, uh, he believes I'm going to hang out with him next week. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas. Um, he's, uh, he believes what he says, but I don't believe he's correct. I think you know he has a way of looking at things, and um, he's uh, he's correct about a lot of things. He's correct about a lot of uh, government corruption and a lot of scandal, and he catches the government doing a lot of shifty shit that they shouldn't be doing. And you know, I would say he's right more than half the time, which is very scary. But there's a lot of you know speculation, a lot of speculation, a lot of you know making some sort of assertion that may or may not be true, but saying that it is true and then sticking to it. There's a lot of that going on, too. It's, I think there's a, uh, too much appeal to fear used there. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's very, fear is intoxicating, you know. It's, I mean, you can get caught up in it, man. I mean, you could go online today and just start researching uh, murders and death and attacks and assaults and have yourself convinced that this shit is happening all around you all the time just ready to grab you someone's gonna stab you and cut your heart out and sell it to russia or they're just gonna torture you in the woods and do rituals on you I mean, if you read enough shit online there's almost seven billion people in the world okay that's an insane amount of people that's seven thousand million people that's you can't even wrap your head around how many people that is well, if you add up all the fucking psychos and assaults, you, you're going to find a lot of them. It's a lot of people, just the numbers themselves. But the chances are none of that shit's going to happen to you. But if you sit around thinking about it all the time and, 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 and freaking out about it all the time and just buying more guns and stockpiling weapons and trying to make a fucking shelter and a safe room in your house, man, it's almost like you're inviting it. It's almost like you're bringing it on. You're bringing it into your life when it's not necessary. It's good to be informed. It's good to know that there's people like that out there. It's good to know that there's a lot of psychos out there it's so that if you run across one, you're not completely shocked to the point where you don't recognize it as a threat. But I, I definitely think that there's far too much of a call to fear. There's far, far too much of a, a push to profit off fear. 